you've got the, he said you have the business viability, you have the technical feasibility, and you have the human desirability, and all of that's the concept phase. Once you get that right, you go to development and go to market. And Tom's going to talk about go to market strategies based on these uh, four uh, new venture strategies. But the heart of that, the intersection of that, where those three circles intersect, is where breakaway innovation happens. If you miss any one of them, if you don't have both the human desirability and the business viability, technical feasibility doesn't work. And that's why a lot of really hot technologies don't sell in the marketplace. They don't, you can't build a business around them because there's other things missing, right? Or you've got everything else, but you can't bring it to the market because the technology was too risky. It's not going to work either. So that's kind of the breakaway zone. And, and breakaway to us is not necessarily just one breakthrough. Sometimes it's a series of breakthroughs. In fact, in an existing company, you have to do a series of breakthroughs because there's mindsets throughout the whole organization, almost in every function. So uh, we're going to talk a little bit about breakaway innovation and, and also the notion of breakthrough. So the business as usual approach, the mindset that says, you know, look up at past results, make it predictable, safe, build in risk, under control, and no surprises. Now let me say it this way. Uh, if you're an entrepreneur, you don't buy this. But if you're in an existing company, these are the messages that are in the company many times, subliminally. You know, they want you to take risk, but make sure there's no surprises. They want you to innovate, but don't, you know, make sure it's predictable that you'll come in on schedule and on budget. And it's almost an oxymoron. You, you cannot have a business as usual strategy or a business as usual mindset and produce an extraordinary <coughs> result because in that extraordinary result, it's not business as usual. And if even in the, you know, the, the, the venture capitalists and the financiers, uh, at least recently, and I'm, I'm sure it's been that way in the past because I've raised money too, when, you, when they talk to you about things, a lot of them talk to you like they're your banker, they're not your venture capital people. They want to see Revenue, they want to see traction, they want to see this, they want to see that, they want to see that. And you know, if you got revenue traction fast enough, you probably wouldn't even need them. So I mean, it's kind of a, again, it's kind of a dual message there. You know, we want, you to, we want the next best, best thing, but we don't want to take any risk around it. So I still get, you know, that line then is kind of an extrapolation, and it produces more better difference in the past, but it doesn't produce extraordinary results. It doesn't produce what I call a breakthrough in a breakthrough approach where the, when you look at past results, you have some degree of certainty for the future, and that's the only way you can have some degree of certainty for the future, is looking at the past, then essentially you've got a past-based future, no matter how you slice it. But if you're willing to take a breakthrough approach, and again, entrepreneurs, I think, automatically fall into this. They almost have to. Um, then you're actually doing a future projection that's future-based. And there's no usual historic precedent to a breakthrough. <coughs> you have to commit to it in advance. Now that's an interesting thing. Why do I say you have to commit to it in advance? Anybody think about that? Want to comment on that? Why do I have to commit? You know, the normal process is you plan and then you commit. And I'm saying no, a breakthrough process, you commit and then you plan. What is the difference there? Anybody? Do the mindset. Okay, what kind of mindset does a commitment produce that planning doesn't produce? Lots of ambiguity. What? Lots of, Lots of ambiguity. Anybody else? Motivation. Motivation. Why do you say motivation? You have to be highly motivated in order to commit to a concept. Right. Right. Yeah? Visionary. Visionary. Okay. I used the word for control data. Uh, Tom said that. And we were in a, I won't bore you with the details, we were in a really tough situation. And long story short, we had to produce a 24, a super computer in 24 months. Now, I was the director of engineering. If I had taken that normal way of doing the supercomputer in 24 months, it would have come out somewhere between 36 and 48. Got that? Business as usual. Then I would have tweaked it, because I was really serious. We really want to have this happen, right? And, and I might have gotten 10% or 20%. So instead of 36, it might have been 32. Or it might have been 20, 29. But instead of 48, it might have been 40. You get that? So I actually made a commitment in advance and agreed to a 24-month computer. Uh, because in a way, if you are planning for the past, what you're doing is, is you're tweaking that which has already been invented. This is a really important point. 
you're tweaking or modifying or innovating on that which has already been invented. And in that invention, your mindset is already you know, framed by the structure that you're tweaking because the structure is laid out for you. When you actually commit to an advance, you actually have to find a solution that's not been invented. And, th and, and, and that then comes out of your commitment. And we're going to talk about why that comes out of commitment because it, it kind of creates what we call an energetic gap. And we'll talk a little bit more about that. So then you also have to focus on a specific, measurable outcome. Wishy-washy breakthrough results are just that. They're, they're wishy-washy. You, you can't mobilize a team. You can't em embody an organization you know, where that, that goal is an embodiment within the whole entire organization. And certainly you have to be willing to take some risk. 